In the last video, we looked at issues around indoor air quality and the importance of ventilation in homes. So what is ventilation? Well, it's the movement of air into, through and out of a building, and we can break it down into two principal types. There's unintended ventilation, well that's leaks to you and me, and intended ventilation. That's holes in the fabric of the building for the purpose of ventilation and fans etc. Basically the stuff that moves air on purpose that, well, isn't leaks. In this video, System Types, we are going to look at four typical systems that provide ventilation. 1. Natural ventilation and intermittent fans. This is a series of holes in the fabric of the building, in walls or windows, located in every room in the house. The idea is, we allow air to move into, through and out of the house naturally because of the wind outside. This process is called cross-ventilation. In addition, fans in wet rooms like bathrooms and kitchens remove moisture at source. They're called intermittent fans because they're only on for a short period of time when there's activity in those rooms, usually triggered by a light switch or something else. Once they stop, we rely on the cross-ventilation to manage the rest. Did you know? When you sit in a building with cross-ventilation, on one side you will feel cold air coming in, and on the other side you won't, because warm air is going out. This is what's supposed to happen. If you close a vent, you not only stop the process of ventilation in that room, you can also affect the other side too. If your fans aren't working properly, or you've turned them off, moisture that's supposed to be extracted can now be picked up by the cross-ventilation and find its way to other parts of the house, often condensing on cold surfaces, causing mould. 2. Passive Stack Ventilation, or PSV Think of a chimney from a wet room in the building to the roof, and you have a passive stack. These replace extract fans and provide a natural low-energy way of extracting moisture at source. And, because it has no moving parts, it requires very little maintenance. As with natural ventilation, we have holes in each room to supply fresh air, except now, not in rooms where the stack is. Passive stacks work in a similar way to a normal flue for a fire, in that it creates a draw. By a combination of suction from wind at the top of the flue and a temperature difference between the top and the bottom. This is called the stack effect. Did you know, passive stacks like fires, rely on wind and temperature difference to work. This means that even if designed correctly, due to wind and temperature changes outside, there are times when it will work better than others. Passive stacks also operate at very low pressures. This means that if you close vents or the stack is not designed and installed correctly, it can easily affect its ability to function properly. 3. Continuous Mechanical Extract Ventilation, or MEV. With this system, we continuously extract from wet areas and supply air to dry areas through holes in walls or windows. Similar to passive stack, except this time we extract with fans. This can be done separately in each wet room. This is called decentralized MEV, or through a central fan, this is called centralized MEV. These are quiet and energy efficient fans. The idea is that a steady reliable movement of air out of a building creates a steady and reliable flow in. Because of this, it can be a robust and reliable way of ventilating a wide range of buildings. Did you know? When commissioned, there is a requirement for a certain amount of air to be extracted from each type of wet room under building regulations. This should be checked again when the ventilation system is serviced. Time and resources should be set aside to set up and commission the system properly. 4. Mechanical Ventilation with Heat Recovery, or MVHOR. An MVHOR system is typically a large centralised unit that both extracts from the wet areas and supplies fresh air to the rest of the building via a series of ducts. Because the system is designed to supply as much air as it takes out, it's called a balanced system. An MVHOR system is designed to not only provide good indoor air quality 
like the others, but it's also designed to recover heat that would otherwise be lost through ventilation. It does this by passing the stale warm air it is extracting past the cold fresh air it is supplying. This warms the incoming air up. It does this in a heat exchanger within the fan unit. As such, MVHOR is often used in energy efficient buildings to assist in the retention of heat. Did you know? An MVHOR system needs to be in an airtight house to really get the benefit of recovering heat. If too much heat is lost through leaks, then the energy benefits of the system are never realised. It also has a lot more going on inside than other systems, and as such requires a little more attention. For example, it has filters to protect both the heat recovery exchanger inside and also the condition of the ducts and air it's supplying. If these are not looked after, the system's performance will be affected, as will the air quality. Like an MEV system, an appropriate amount of time and resources need to be put aside to set up and commission the system properly. A final thought. Ventilation is an integral part of a building's success or failure. Whatever system you choose, what's important is that you understand the strengths and weaknesses of the different systems and have a plan for your building, whether it's new, a renovation, or you're trying to solve an existing problem. In the next video, we will cover demand-controlled ventilation systems.